Hello and welcome to the channel. For today's little adventure we're going to be following a portion of the Avontir Narrow Gauge Railway in South Africa. So myself and the Goose will be starting off at Bay West Mall near Hunter's Retreat, making our way westwards along the line out of the city. And this sounds easy enough, but keep in mind this railway has not seen any traffic on it in more than 13 years. The last train going through here in 2010 on a steam safari. Yeah. Unfortunately, most of the maintenance routes and access lines along the railway have remained reasonably passable. Probably thanks to the area being such a popular spot for off-road and enduro enthusiasts that come here with their off-road and motocross motorbikes. No one bothers you, it's reasonably safe, as long as you take the proper precautions. So for this first leg of our trip today, the railway line's on our left. This access road, I've been on this road many times. So there's no serious hazards, there's no holes that I know of, or stormwater drains or ditches. But that being said, it's always a good idea to keep an eye out for any new obstacles that might have come in in the meantime. My mode of transport today is my trusty WR450. And the Goose has opted for her air-cooled TTR230. Yamaha seems to be a brand of choice these days. Never looked back since buying these two bikes, and they're very suitable to what we used before. As you can see, the track is actually in reasonably good nick, except for all the trees growing through it. But that's nothing that a chainsaw on a long weekend can't sort out. But at this very moment, the train wouldn't be able to run here, even if we wanted to, even if we had all the permissions and permits and everything. The most recent iteration of the Apple Express preservation movement, they ran the train from Kings Beach to Valley Station. Valley Station is just opposite the airport, it's a stretch of around about 12 kilometers. Now in order to obtain the permit for the small section of the line, it needed to be proven that the train cannot physically exceed the bounds of the small section that they are applying the permit for. So it was decided that a stop block would be installed on the line just other side of Valley Station. A loop was put in place so that the loco could turn around and the small section of line was usable. But what this also means is anything departing from Yumut Station can no longer access any of the line beyond Valley Station. So every now and again you're going to get a tree that's fallen across the road and then you need to take a little detour. But as you can see, the detour has already been written in pretty well. I believe some cyclists also make use of these routes when they do their cross-country exercise and recreation. Many years ago, when I was a small boy, we used to run this route quite often with my father's Honda CG125 to get to this abandoned quarry that's next to the railway line, all hidden away and filled with water. We used to come swim here. So coming up now is the underpass underneath the N2 highway. Now last time I was here, uh, someone had spun barbed wire right across the entrance and the exit of this underpass to ensure people couldn't pass underneath it. If you look to the left, you'll see the remnants of that. Obviously people use this route all the time, so they took it upon themselves to remove this barbed wire keep this path open. All along the line you'll see evidence of people fencing things up. Since the railway line closed down, people took it upon themselves to limit access through these areas as much as possible uh, for various reasons. Some for vagrants and scrappers trying to remove valuable items and other times you'll find people just sort of lay claim to the land, take it for themselves if it's adjacent to their property. So we're now coming up to the quarry which you're going to be seeing on your right hand side, there's a little bit of it already. So this used to be the family hangout spot when I was younger, we used to come here either by car or by bicycle, sometimes we even walked, but we were always armed with some flotation device, some tractor, inner tire or we even brought boats, kayaks, canoes, whatever we could get our hands on. Now as far as I remember, there used to be fish in this quarry, I'm not sure if there still is, and I wouldn't be able to tell you what kind, probably bass or some freshwater fish. This quarry is very deep, it is uh, 
perceptibly deep. Over there is the bulk of it. So all around the outside edge of the quarry it gets deep pretty quickly. It's quite a steep drop into the water. Except the main access point which I'll now show you. Yeah. Which has got this very gradual ramp that runs slowly into the quarry and makes its way down. The visibility is obviously very poor, but we've explored this place through exhaustion with snorkels and fins. Swam here when it was quiet, when the visibility was a little bit better. Especially down on the ramp, you can see quite a few uh, artifacts, shall I say. So I was pleased to see that this road is now open again. The previous owner of this land, he fenced this quarry off completely. He didn't want anybody else swimming here or accessing this area. I mean, this obviously never stopped us, but it's good to see that the fence has now been taken down over this entrance, and we can simply ride in. The quarry's level is nice and full today. We've had some really good rains in the Eastern Cape, some much needed rains. So we're coming out of quite a severe drought, so it's a very good sign. So the goose navigating the submerged part of this ramp entrance. If she had to carry on straight, she would then gradually descend into the quarry. But going even slightly left or right, you're going to find it gets deep very quickly. So for comparison, this is what it looks like today during our visit. And then if you rewind 22 years, this is what it looked like. Same angle, yours truly on that CG125 during a fishing trip. So shortly after arrival, we realized that we're not entirely alone. So we decide to skip the skinny dip, play it safe, and head back out. So I'd be lying if I said I knew what they mined at this quarry back in the day when it was still operational. But the legend goes that there's still a few bulldozers down there. When the quarry started filling up with water, it did so pretty rapidly. And there was apparently not enough time to get all the bulldozers and equipment out before it was completely filled up. We've never been able to find the bulldozers because the visibility, as I said, is very poor in the deeper parts. But if you go there on a quiet morning when the sediment is nicely settled on the bottom, about halfway down the ramp, 40 to 50 meters, if you look carefully, you'll find the remains of an old VW Beetle. Now whether its presence there is intentional or accidental remains to be seen, but I can tell you I would love to drag a nice strong magnet through the bottom of that quarry and see what I can dredge up. I've recently started watching these magnet fishing videos, the guys find these artifacts in the rivers and lakes, and I'm willing to bet that that quarry has got more than a few secrets hidden beneath the waters. So gauging the interest from this video, please comment below like to see me go back to the quarry with a magnet and see what I can dig up. There may be nothing to speak of or maybe we'll find something interesting. So up ahead to the right you'll see a few houses. Uh, these are residences. People live here. People that own the land adjacent to the railway line and they own a lot of cattle. They've got fields, fenced off fields and a lot of cattle. So back in the day when we used to come swim here the owner put up a gate this gap in the fence and he would try and charge us money for access to the quarry but obviously we always found a way around that gate. Chelsea Junction is where the main national narrow gauge line branches off into a private sideline owned by a cement company in Port Elizabeth called the EPPC branch line which was used to transport limestone from Lurie further down the national line to the cement company in downtown Port Elizabeth. We are now crossing the line that branches off, or what's left of it anyway, with the old station building on the left and some unfortunate fruit wagons rotting away on the right. These wagons are littered all over the line. Wherever there's a siding, you'll find some abandoned wagons. Copper wheel bushes stripped out, stolen for scrap, going nowhere. Here you see the other side of the triangle, passing over it now. And if you rewind 27 years, here's the Apple Express on the exact same spot, looking back. I also managed to get some footage of 124, otherwise known as Granny Smith, pulling into Chelsea Junction. The footage quality is what you can come to expect from a VHS tape that's been ripped for PC.
The steam you see blasting out the side of the locomotive comes from something called a blowdown cock. Now remember that because it's going to be relevant to a story that I share with you later. Notice the small building on the right is the same building that I pointed out a bit earlier in the video. And also the lamp poles and trees which are no longer there. Chelsea was quite a routine stop for the Apple Express when it used to operate. Gives the passengers a chance to stretch their legs and go and admire the engine. And it gives the crew an opportunity to build up some fire for the road ahead. It's hard to believe that this is the same place as what I showed in the GoPro video earlier. The road that we are on now is obviously in very good shape because it's being used daily by the owners of the land. Uh, this was always a very picturesque area with flat plains. Now you can see the railway line is basically buried. The owners know there's no trains running here so when the road gets scraped and cleaned all of the excess mud just gets dumped over the railway line which is now completely submersed in this section anyway. If by some miracle train operations ever return to this line, I think this section would be the one that I dread most. Chopping trees down, you get a decent chainsaw and you get the job done. This area is going to require a lot of earth moving. Not to mention all the fences that have to be cut that have been erected since. Here's a crossing, you can see the line protrude slightly, there it is there. And then back to being submerged under about a foot of dirt. One of my fondest memories uh, on this very road going the opposite direction was the day we were chasing the train. We were driving right up against the locomotive and the crew that day, Vili and Quirsi, they decided they were going to spray us with some water. And when that didn't deter us, Quissy decided he was going to open the blowdown cock of the locomotive. And that kind of put an end to our chase that day. The footplate crew on the locomotive were always in this never-ending battle with us, the train crew. The losers being the side that took the most water by the end of the day. So it was always a gamble to drive with open windows when chasing the train. So up ahead where those trees start, just beyond that is the small station of green bushes. But the road that we're on, the nice flat usable road, that takes a big detour to the left. So the small section between us and green bushes, the last time I saw it, it was fenced off. So let's have a look and see, with the goose following closely behind.
het nou maar net geredeneer as nou een treinspoor is, dan behoor het nou nie so erg te wees, nie. Is ons ooit nog by die treinspoor? Ek weet nie. Hier is ek op die treinspoor. the things I put this poor woman through. It didn't take long to realize that there were a few extra steps we needed to take to get through here. So I started with the ceremonious bundu bashing. Especially since I knew that the little TTR wasn't going to be able to bulldoze through the remaining trees as efficiently as my 450. And bulldoze it did. Suddenly, there we were, back in the open, with Greenbush's station in sight. From what I remember, the station had a small platform and a cattle ramp for loading livestock onto the train. The cattle ramp is no longer here, but the remains of the platform and the station ID board and a lone fruit wagon in the siding is all that remains in Greenbush's. that we reach the crossing of Seaview Road and the end of part one. If you've enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers! Hey.